A few weeks ago, I sold off my Canon EF 16-35 and the reason I sold it was not because I didn't want an ultra-wide lens anymore, but it was because I found that I was hardly using it at all. And this was always due to the fact that I was always too lazy to bring it around because of its size. Usually for shoots, I tend to bring my usual suspects, the 24 1.4, the 50 1.2 and the 85 1.2 for total coverage. However, there are times when I do need to bring something that is a little wider than 24 and that is when I use the 16 to 35. However, I just found that it was just too cumbersome to bring it around as a safety net for every single shoot and most of the time I ended up not even using it at all and leaving it at home. So that's the whole reason why I decided to sell it off. So you can imagine my joy a few weeks down the line when I discovered that Canon was coming out with a brand new 16 millimeter f 2.8 prime. Oh! The minute I heard it was announced, I immediately got in touch with my trusted Canon reseller and pre-ordered one myself. So for today, I will be reviewing the super compact ultra wide angle lens by Canon, the RF 16 millimeter f 2.8. Full disclosure, I did buy the lens with my own money and this is definitely not a sponsored video. Okay, so first let's talk about the build quality of this lens. As you would expect from any Canon products, the build quality of the RF 16 millimeter is good and it is what I come to expect from Canon at this price range. The lens is made out of plastic and feels quite light and it has a metal mount at the rear. The lens has a really nice super smooth and dampened focusing ring that acts as both a focus wheel and also a function wheel. The build quality is pretty much identical to the RF 50 millimeter twin brother. All in all, I don't have any real complaints at all and it is what it is for something that costs this much. Okay now so let's briefly talk about the specs of this lens. This lens weighs only 165 grams and it is only 5 grams heavier than the RF 51.8. At its widest aperture this lens opens up to f 2.8 and can be stopped down all the way to f 22. It has an angle of view of around 108 degrees and that isn't too bad considering it's only 2 degrees difference between the super expensive 15 to 35. Yeah I know it's not really really comparing apples to apples here and I know in the realm of wide angle lenses every millimeter makes a huge difference but yeah I still think it's not too bad especially considering its price. Okay so back to the specs. This lens has an amazing closest focusing distance of only 13 centimeters but to be really honest with you I did feel it was somewhat closer because I really got really close to the subject so yeah and at the time it definitely felt a lot closer than 13 centimeters. In terms of optical design the lens is constructed using nine elements in seven groups and has seven rounded aperture blades. As for the filter size, it shares the same filter size as the RF 50mm f1.8, which is 43mm. Okay, in terms of experience and usability, here is where things really get interesting. Okay, generally speaking, it's pretty straightforward and everything about this lens works well and I don't have any real issues on using it operational-wise. However, this is a lens that has quite a few bags of tricks up its sleeve and because of that, I feel I need to break it down into a few categories so you guys get a clear image of the strength and weaknesses of this lens. So first let's talk about its strength. For me the number one strength about this lens has definitely got to be its size and its weight. I think every single ultra wide for full frame cameras should really be in this size in my opinion. I feel that the size allowed me to snap all kinds of stuff that I would otherwise be a little more hesitant with a bigger and more expensive ultra wide lens. The size really helped a lot in being able to sneak more shots because it was so inconspicuous and I just love that about this lens. The other great benefit about its size is that it really makes for a great lens to travel with and always have in your bag. Although I don't personally vlog at all but I found that the size and weight of the lens makes me feel tempted to try to vlog. Also the other thing I love about this lens is the fact that this lens is a beast on a gimbal. It is so easy to use and the lightness makes it so maneuverable using it with a gimbal. Another thing that I really love about this lens has to be its closest focusing distance. In my opinion, it was simply amazing that I could get really right up close to my subjects and it would still focus only inches away. Because of that, I have found that this lens has a really unique macro capability too. Due to its ability to focus really close, you can get really quite unique looking macro ultra wide shots with this lens. And I have to admit, it's making me really love this lens even more just because of that. Also, this lens 
is really quite sharp and it retains details quite well. The bokeh on this lens, especially when you get really close to your subjects, is really nice and there is great background separation. In fact, dare I say at 16 millimeters, I feel that this lens has better bokeh than my old 16 to 35 millimeter lens. That's what I feel anyway. I don't know how true that is though, but I did also feel having less lens elements, this lens also performs better in low light compared to my old 16 to 35. Okay, so that's the strengths of this lens. Now let's talk about some of the weaknesses of this lens that I did encounter. Number one has to be the ibis wobble on the edges of the frame. And to be really honest, I don't think that it is really the fault of the lens, but it is rather a trade-off that you get with most image stabilized cameras while using ultra wide lenses. So you really need to be more careful when using such an ultra wide lens like this whenever you have an ibis camera. It is definitely gonna wobble on the side and there's nothing really that you can do about it except be really, really careful and mindful about it to reduce it and mitigate it a little. The other big issue with this lens is that it has quite a massive barrel distortion. However, the camera does correct most of the distortion in camera. Also, if you shoot in raw and compress raw, you will see the distortion reappearing in your Lightroom. At the moment, there are no lens correction profiles for this lens in Lightroom, but I have found the best profile that works for this lens for me is the 14mm 2.8L Mark II and the 15mm fisheye lens profile. Depending on the shot, you would need to tweak it accordingly. Also, if you shoot this lens at its closest focusing distance, you will get quite a massive vignette. So you would need to correct it in post with one of the lens profiles I mentioned earlier. If that doesn't remedy it, you can still always crop in a little to get rid of it totally. Anyway, here's an AF test for you guys to see. The AF is good and also I did some tests for lens breathing and also lens flaring so here it is. Right then, so what's my conclusion after using this lens? What do I think about it? And who do I think should really get this lens? Well, despite all its shortcomings, I have to say I really do love this lens for what it is. However, do bear in mind, I am coming from an angle that I did say in the beginning of this review that I was sick and tired of lugging around my 16 to 35 lens everywhere just as a safety net for times when I do need to get a wider angle whenever there was, you know, tight spots that I needed to shoot. So yeah, that is something that that is really important for me. I need to be mobile, you know, and that 16 to 35 was just too crazy to bring for every single shoot. And I ended up not even using it most of the time. I really feel that the size and weight benefits that this lens provides me is something I wouldn't trade off. Now I can have my ultra wide in my bag all the time without having to sacrifice on being weighed down. Also the unique macro wide angle perspective this lens captures is something I am really into as I really do like shooting super close to my subjects while while also being able to tell a fuller story by capturing more of the background too. However, that being said, this lens is definitely not for everyone. If you are someone that needs an ultra wide that doesn't have a massive barrel distortion or vignette when shooting up close to your subject, then I would steer away from this lens. However, do note that these setbacks can be corrected once the lens profiles are available in Lightroom. And as for video, I didn't experience that at all with this lens. I think the video is is processed so yeah it's a good thing that we don't have to worry about the distortion as much in video also the other thing worth noting is that if you're shooting raw or compressed raw you can correct the lens distortion within the camera itself by converting it into a JPEG and if you convert it from the camera itself you really get a good distortion correction within the camera because the camera's version of converting the file is directly from Canon so I suppose it's optimized. So all in all for me the RF16 is definitely my new favorite wide angle nifty 50 if I can call it that and I just simply adore this lens right now. Right so that's it then I hope you did find this short review helpful and if you did please don't forget to give me a like share and subscribe to my channel. Also if you do feel like supporting this channel by making a small contribution I have also left a link 
link to my buy me a coffee down in the description below and also if you would like to check out some of the gears that i do use for making all these type of videos i did leave all the links in the description down below so do check them out right then see you guys in the next video peace